Yeah, that's right. We're joined by Gene Soroka, who is the executive director of the Port of L.A., where 40 percent of the U.S. container imports come into and 30 percent of exports go out. Gene, thank you very much for having us here at the port. Where are the pressure points? All throughout the supply chain. Asia factory output is at record highs, yet we're still behind on orders. Increases as much as 30 percent in vessel capacity in the Trans-Pacific have been deployed, yet we still don't have enough space. Cargo coming here to the port is like taking 10 lanes of freeway traffic and compressing them into five. Cargo is sitting for longer at the port than normal, as it is at warehouses. We need to speed the velocity throughout the domestic supply chain as well. Is the issue here infrastructure? If you speak to the container liners, they'll say that the COVID-19 pandemic has basically exposed shortcomings in ports like L.A., is that what the problem is here? There's no one answer, Ed, but infrastructure has been a topic of discussion for some time out here. In fact, over the last decade, the U.S. federal government and Congress has out-invested the West Coast ports at a rate of 11 to 1. That's more than $11 billion that's gone to the East and Gulf Coast versus a little more than $1 billion here on the West Coast. That has to change. Talk to me about labor pressures. You have a lot of different arms of the port working in synchrony, the dock workers, the truck drivers, and the warehouse. What is the story there? Three segments of labor, basically. One are our dock workers, and they've been out on the job an average of six days a week since the pandemic began. Second is the fact that that work being done on the docks has improved vessel productivity by 50 percent since the surge started last summertime. We're moving more containers on and off ships on average per call than any other port in the world. Second, the truck drivers. Only about 50 percent of all truck drivers are calling here at least once a week, those that are registered. And while vessel capacity has increased by 30 percent, truck capacity has increased by only eight. The last segment is the warehouse worker. We've got more than 2 billion square feet of warehousing from the shores of the Pacific out to the desert region. They're overflowing with cargo, need more folks on the job, and need to expand their work hours just like everyone else. Well, so the final question for me then is how does this all get better? Do we just need to make more investments in infrastructure? Is this an issue of hiring more? Is the federal government getting involved? How do we fix this problem long term, Gene? Yeah, short and long term answers, Ed. Number one, the federal government is involved at the highest levels. The president's executive order on supply chain, including the look at certain commodities like agriculture, is front and center every day. Bringing on Port Envoy John Picari, the former U.S. Department of Transportation Deputy Secretary and Secretary of Transportation in Maryland, has been an absolute light on the subject and has been working around the clock to help us out as well. Hey, Gene, in addition, what we need... Sorry, Gene, yes. I apologize. You were finishing. Yeah. In addition, we need to take advantage of the 30 percent of truck appointments that go unused every day here at the port. That's solved through information sharing. Back to you, Alex. All right, Gene, thanks a lot. So I was going to ask, um, I know you, have, you don't have a crystal ball necessarily, but are we going to have a Christmas this year? I mean, literally, are the toys for kids going to be in stores? Uh, like, how long is this logjam? Yes, yeah, stated here, we will have a Christmas. Many of our importers, especially in the retail community, have been very savvy evaluating these supply chain occurrences, and they pulled forward much of their holiday season inventory. In fact, we began seeing elevated levels of cargo as early as June this year, when normally that happens the end of August or September. I feel confident the retail community will rise to the occasion once again. Gene, it's Guy. Can I look a little further forward than Christmas? We are clearly seeing a huge amount of demand for your services at the moment. In a year's time, will that demand be as high? If you invest now, are you going to be investing into a slowing market at some point as we start to see some of this extreme demand fading from the system? Yeah, good to see you, Guy. Great question. What we see is that at some point in the future, the import cargo will plateau. If we can get past the Delta variant, the Mu variant, we'll go back out and start spending discretionary income in the service sector. We're not quite there yet. But at the same time, we see a strong market through an early Lunar New Year in the 1st of February. Retailers are telling me, following that holiday, if there really is one, because of all the work at hand, they're going to focus on replenishment in the second quarter of 2022. It's also an issue about the port point of origin, right? We hear a lot about China. Seven out of ten of the world's biggest ports are in mainland China. And policymakers there won't hesitate 
to shut down a port. What is your communication like with the point of origin to know what's coming when it comes to dealing with that backlog? Yeah, and I worked overseas for 11 years and four in China, so I've maintained many of my contacts. And what we've seen are these rolling third and fourth waves of COVID exposure from Vietnam's factory community back up to the port communities in China. It really has not impacted us. We saw one terminal shutdown in Ningbo. We saw a slight shut, a shutdown of Yantian port, which meant about 50% productivity for two weeks. The cargo yeah. keeps flowing at record levels and the productivity is at record levels here at the Port of Los Angeles. Gene, um, to jump in again, a, a final quick question from me, maybe. Are you paying your people more? If you are paying your people more, do you think that higher level of wages that you are paying and your contractors within, uh, within the sites, both the warehouses and are, are on the port, are going to pay more? Do you think that's sticky? Do you think wages go up and stay up? Guy, I think that's a great question, too. And as you know, we're a landlord port. We lease our properties out to the private sector service providers who bring on labor. What we are seeing is that everyone here who wants a job has a job today, but we've got to get a little bit more activity in the truck area and a lot more in the warehouse community itself. All private sector jobs, which will continue to work with those segments and partners to push forward.